Um, we have first up uh, Lenny Argebright and Kirsten Wisniewski. I hope I pronounce those both close. <laughs> All right, uh, both from UNC Wilmington uh, to talk to us about planning for Love Data Week. Yes. I'll hand it off to you. Okay. Setting my timer. Okay. Uh, so, uh, our topic is making waves planning for Love Data Week. I'm Linny Argebright, a data librarian, and with me is Kirsten Wisniewski, the research development specialist from the Research and Innovation Office at University of North Carolina, Wilmington. Our talk today will briefly review our experiences organizing Love Data Week at UNCW related to what was involved in event planning, making partnerships, and marketing. We will follow each of these by exploring lessons that we learned about these aspects of planning this week-long event. And finally, we'll discuss ideas that we've had about how to make planning Love Data Week sustainable in the future um, for us at UNCW. We wrote these experiences in a short report, so we'll share a link to that at the end. And we hope that you can apply our experiences to event planning generally, as well as encourage you to set up Love Data Weeks at your own institutions. As a little context, I came into the data librarian role at UNCW last August 2021, which was a new position for the library to have. And similarly, Kirsten joined shortly before me in another new position for the university. So we're both facing having skills, but no one knowing who we are. We're also acknowledging that UNCW's recent shift into becoming an R2 with new doctoral programs and more impetus for research intensity would make our positions in particular quite valuable. I knew ICPSR organized Love Data Week that was similar in style to open access weeks at universities. And so for anyone new to hearing about Love Data Week, what this is, um, this is an annual international celebration of data held every year during the week of Valentine's Day, which is super cute, organized by the Social Science Data Repository, ICPSR, and hosted through, am I still sharing my, okay, and hosted through, um, volunteer universities. At UNCW, we put on a series of online workshops, panels, and spotlights about research data pictured on the screen. And when I pitched the idea, the library was open to me trying it. So I thought this would be a great opportunity for me to build up outreach about myself, for Kirsten to build up outreach about herself. Um, I've listed here some of our other goals that Love Data Week could become at UNCW besides just um, pitching outreach for ourselves, um, but to other research support offices on campus, to build data skills on campus, all of these individual researchers needing to use more data on campus, um, building up that community on campus. So if all these people who are doing research related to data, maybe there could be some um, relative interests and collaborations that could arise from having something like Love Data Week, and also to highlight faculty research in having speakers who are researchers to bring up examples of how they've used data in their own work as related to whatever session topic we're having. Uh, for a pilot event series, I'd say it was pretty successful um, with 151 participants across the six weeks we held that week. So starting with planning, this was our approach to planning Love Data Week. Before anything, of course, I had to get permission to run this program because I knew it would take significant amount of time of my work time to plan. And it helped that I planned an open access week before, so I was aware of some of the components and duration of time that would be involved in planning a week-long series of events. So, you know, I was very transparent when I was requesting permission um, by my supervisor to, to put this on. And when I asked Kirsten if she could help me um, share some of that time load. When you're planning an event, you need to think about what the topics will be, of course, but also focus on who will be attracted to come and how you'll get them to come, as well as the technical and logistical details needed for running the event. I kept track of what stages occurred when, so I could assess afterwards what component to planning could be improved. On the screen here, I've broken down our timeline of what things happened when 
in our planning efforts. And here are some of the lessons we learned when reflecting about our experience doing event planning. About the content of the topics themselves, keep the university's available resources and researchers' needs in mind to offer valuable session topics. As an example, I wanted to involve the makerspace as a topic to build my connection with them. So including a session with the makerspace helped me to learn how I could even collaborate with them. As another example, we found it difficult getting campus speakers for a session about data management plans because there wasn't much experience on campus. And that actually implies how valuable such a session was to host and highlight me as a contact that could help researchers with this topic. Because we wanted to increase buy-in and awareness about our program, we chose our session speakers to get representation across all schools. This would help uh, this would also help how different disciplines could come at a data topic differently, which could start building up some of our other goals that we listed before. So considering who your session speakers could be and be representative about your speakers um, could really be valuable in planning out your, your topics and, and your events. And we found that our planning timeline cut a little too close to the event week itself which impacted marketing and added stress in those final weeks. The majority of our work reaching out to speakers occurred in January, which meant Marketing Love Data Week to campus began in late January, just two weeks before the event. So for this 2023 series, for, for the next Love Data Week, we're going to push up the timeline by a month or so. Thanks, Lenny. Um, happy to be here. Um, so obviously the first partnership that kind of emerged was the one between Linny and I, and she graciously, um, I should say this has really been her brainchild and she was the lead on this. Um, and she graciously invited me in to um, assist and support and collaborate um, because it really was a natural fit between the mission and goals of what the library has been trying to do and what research and innovation has done. Um, and I am in the research and innovation office, which is our um, sort of central support and one of the things we really know is that so much additional research support happens across campus, and we really want to continue messaging and making um, faculty and researchers on campus aware of this and really trying to build that campus research culture. So it really was a natural fit for Lenny and I to work together um, and to get to know each other in the library. And because we both are so new, um, to kind of complement um, kind of the connections that we already had and the learning that we'd each already done. and. By bringing us together, we were able to kind of approach and bring in other partners um, because both Lenny and I had only been here for less than a year. Um, you know, we knew different sections and sectors of the university. And so we were able to tap into and harness and leverage those relationships um, because our university is um, a very relational campus, um, but folks do feel quite siloed. So there's really an interest and eagerness to collaborate, but for folks to kind of facilitate that. So we were able to help step into that role. And as Lenny said, we did find that there were some gaps as we went to those existing relationships that we had, but we were able to then ask those trusted partners, like who would they then recommend for us to go to and use that as like connecting the dots. Um, a couple examples I'll just use was that in October um, of last fall, I had worked with our College of Health and Human Services to do a research collider about community-based participatory research. And one of the faculty that participated on that um, wound up being one of the faculty we used on our citizen science panel. Um, and we were also able to then use the Community Engagement and Impact Office there to help market and promote our events. So there's a lot of kind of trickle-down effect um, for us. And the great part of that is that we met new people as well. And I think um, the bonus of doing this event was yes, to give faculty an extent of what the research um, support is and to learn about other people's research, but it also allowed us as the service providers and staff to learn about referrals and resources and to get to know each other so that we can make those recommendations to the faculty that we're working with. So it really kind of played, it, the partnering played itself out on multiple um, levels. And it was able to help us expand who we marketed and promoted to and who we were able to bring um, attention to the event for. And it also gave us that credibility and authority for the folks who might not even know that Linny and I and our roles existed on campus. 
Uh, the note about diversity is just that we really, really wanted to focus on making it as interdisciplinary um, as possible, both in terms of our panelists and then by hopefully extension, the folks that would attend. So we were able to get um, people from um, all of our different colleges um, to be engaged in some way, shape or form. Um, and that was a way for us, again, to kind of expand our reach and establish that credibility. Um, lessons learned, um, which I think, you know, some of this we all know from working with partners, but was also just, I think, important reminders um, for us is, you know, really trying to find what the alignment is in terms of getting someone engaged, um, what is in it for them as well, um, being very clear about what the expectations are. Um, setting those roles and responsibilities early. Um, you know, faculty, as we know, are very busy. How can we make it as easy for them as possible? So giving them clear information, sending follow-up emails with details, um, sending reminders as needed, and sort of also just expecting and understanding that that's going to be part of your role. Um, and going into it knowing that that they're going to need that support. I like how we say, please review rather than please write because that is more of the realistic expectations. Um, and then I think that kind of closing the loop after people participated, really making sure that we let them know like what was the evaluation, who attended, we did share our final report and thanking people for their participation and how can we can kind of continue to keep them engaged in the future um, and moving forward. And then building on those new relationships that we um, made through this process because there was a lot of new partnerships, a lot of new contacts, a lot of new touches. So how can we um, bring those people into the fold uh, moving forward? Oh, Lenny, I think you're muted. This is a good time for a three minute warning too. Thanks, sorry. This was our approach to marketing for Love Data Week. We actually have a dedicated outreach librarian, web librarian, and graphic de designer, which helped dramatically in making a professional, attractive marketing material. We had multiple meetings with them to discuss what we needed, who our audience was, and define what Love Data Week was. With consideration of what sort of outreach was possible, we were able to develop a marketing strategy through a few different, mostly digital channels, as shown on the screen. One important thing that we noted was that the library had never done an event to this extent before, a week-long series with a brand. So for this first year especially, we needed to be more involved in the marketing efforts to make sure we were getting what we were looking for. And here are some of the lessons that we learned when reflecting about our experience doing marketing. Think about the real goal for marketing your event. You want to target audiences most likely to be interested. You want to tempt them enough to get them to actually come. And you want to keep things simple so you're not doing extra work and so you don't confuse and deter your audience. Try to create appealing but informative slides for your sessions so they can't help but click instantly. Use people outside your library to help you distribute marketing, which is more effective if they themselves are likely to see the event being interesting. And make your program information easy to find and use online. Based on our website stats, people were only actually spending two minutes on our Love Data Week webpage. So how would you lay the page out with that in mind? When you're starting your planning, start your marketing plan too. It'll help set the expectations for your marketing partners, which was the biggest request our marketing librarians had for us during our assessment. We had to get a lot more involved in marketing because we hadn't given them enough prep time to wrap their heads around what we wanted and the extent of the program. But now that they know it's coming up for the second year of Love Data Week, they're on board and already getting ready. Something big our marketers concluded was that they could start the actual outreach even before we finalize all the logistics because this would encourage familiarity with the program at large. We also found that partners were more willing and likely to effectively do marketing for us if we provided them template language to send on. Thanks. Um, and just some quick notes on kind of how to make this a sustainable process. Um, obviously, this was our first year, so it was a lot of time and work. Um, but because we spent a lot of the groundwork, um, we're sort of in good shape moving forward so that hopefully in the future, we'll have to spend less time on some of the details um, and we can kind of think about increasing our scope. Um, so and, and also realizing that if we pilot new events each year, those will be the ones that were more time intensive. But our, what are the ways in which we can kind of um, work to 
uh, use what we already have in place so that we're more efficient in the future. Um, and I think Lenny touched on some of this with, you know, making the promotion easier as, as we have the brand recognition. And if we can do some of that throughout the year, um, that we can kind of keep this on the forefront of people's minds. Um, also, we did a lot of kind of note taking, um, reflection and assessment throughout the event. So that way we would have that for reference points, which helped us write a report, which then the report itself became a reference tool for us for future planning. We made lists throughout of um, topic ideas that came up, um, what we could do for the future, what some of those gaps, as we noted, were um, that we might be able to get external partners involved in the future. But what can we also reuse? Um, templates that we've now created, emails to panelists, the website that we have, follow-up emails to participants, evaluation. There's going to be a lot that we can kind of reframe and reuse and just tweak for next year as opposed to having to start from scratch. Um, archiving um, the information and workshops that we did and topics in the past so that we can have that for reference points. So a lot of things that we kind of thought about to so that we can keep doing this event again and again in the future, but um, making it so that we can increase the attendance, keep the quality, but not make it quite as time intensive. And that's going to involve really leveraging some of those new relationships and those relationships that we solidified during last year to kind of bring those folks in from planning through to execution to kind of share that work between Linny and I. And so this is just the full report. As Lenny said, we're happy to share that link so that folks can see, um, you know, everything that we kind of wrote about and reflected on that we've just highlighted here today. And then just a couple of um, credits um, and questions and our contact info. Excellent. Thank you. And we do have three minutes for questions before our next talk. It looks like there is at least one in Q&A and one in chat. Linny, I think you spoke to this a little bit. I don't know if you want to say more about the web library and outreach library and the marketing aspect. That's the one in the Q&A. OK, so uh, talk about how that worked with the marketing of this event. So um, we uh, we reached out to our outreach librarian um, and just brought up what, what this is, what we're planning on doing. Um, and then the way that they get coordinated um, with working with their graphic designer, that was sort of still in flux. So there was some reorganization of the library and that was of the library that was a bit like that also made marketing a little bit more difficult to work with them about and what their actual roles and responsibilities were. So I think in the future, it would be more helpful for us to talk at the beginning about what how work was actually divided so that we weren't trying to ask for things that they couldn't do or that they that we would have to go to one and then go to the other with the results so that they were better connected um, between all of our efforts and everyone was informed um, um, the, the graphic designer made um, some of our, our flyers and our logo and, um, you know, the, the infographics of, of like the marketing material. And then the outreach librarian created some social media um, branding and, um, and uh, came up with ideas for where uh, we should market um, everything. Um, but we were really doing most of the what the content should be, and then they were um, using their skills to push it out. Um, and just to address the other question in the chat about um, how did we um, keep notes for future use, and um, I would say that Linny and I did a lot of shared documents Um where we, I think we individually kind of kept notes and she and I did a number of check-ins and we would kind of summarize um, what we did. And then that's also kind of what helped us create the report. So the report is a really um, great place that we were able to formalize and put all of that in one place for future reference. Registered participants. And then we have an afternoon workshop for those who